Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. A Warren family targeted and terrorized by hate crimes. Big break in the case tonight. A man is under arrest. The Local 4 defenders will tell you who is in custody. What a mess. After chaos on the debate stage, President Trump and Joe Biden go back to their corners and back on the campaign trail. And now debate organizers say something's going to be done to make sure last night doesn't happen again. But we're going to begin with Storm Tracker 4. Storms pushing through Metro Detroit right now as we come to you for local, with Local 4 News at 5. Let's start things off with Ben at the top uh, with an update on when we expect it to now move back out. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a good bit of uh, green there on the map, Ben. Yeah, Kim and Devin, the temperatures aloft got colder a lot quicker than what we saw at the surface, and that instability is fueling these storms. We've got a line right now from the city uh, down into the south zone. That doesn't have any lightning on it right now, so that's just some downpours and possibly some gusty winds as it continues out towards the lakeshore. The stronger storms remain in the north zone, and this one has had a history, at least around the Saginaw Bay, of producing uh, some pea-sized hail. There's a possibility that some of this hail could get to around a half inch, but it should stay below severe limits. So if you're in Burnside, Marlette, uh, North Branch, you're going to be next in line to see that uh, area of thunderstorms as it continues to the east at about 20 miles an hour. You can see the hail tracker a little bit further to the west is where we've been picking a lot of that up on Storm Tracker 4, so we'll continue to watch that. Temperatures tonight heading down into the 50s. We'll be down to 52 by midnight, and again, I think a lot of these showers, thunderstorms will be out of here by 8 o'clock tonight. Coming up, we'll talk about much cooler weather and even more rain as we head towards the weekend, guys. All right, Ben, tonight the defenders are learning brand new information after an arrest is made in the Warren hate crime investigation. Let's get right to Sean Lay, and Sean, you've learned the suspect under arrest has confessed to police. Investigators indeed say he has confessed. He's 24 years old and says specifically it was the Black Lives Matter sign in the Hall family window is the reason why he targeted this family on multiple occasions. We've been speaking to the Halls throughout this and every time they said they were confident Warren police would find their man. Fear, constant fear of the unknown. Forced out of their family home for three weeks, targeted for the most vicious, violent racism and hate, Candace and Eddie Hall have consistently responded with forgiveness and grace. Hate brings no good to anyone. But investigators say it was the Hall's Black Lives Matter sign that set off a 24-year-old, a Cousineau High School grad, a delivery truck driver who lives with his parents right around the corner to grab a gun. Police say that he found in his parents' garage and fire multiple times at the Hall's home, throw a rock through their front window, slash all of their tires, and write messages of hate on their truck. I said at the time that this case was the number one priority priority for the Warren Police Department. Investigators tell the local Ford defenders every detective they had worked the case. We showed you officers going door to door to drum up leads. We're told a confidential informant led police to a home on Carrier last night. No one there today, but last night at the door, the man police were looking for. The suspect did confess to the crimes, and I say to the crimes, against the Hall family in addition to another incident that happened on Tom Allen Street. That's where the word pedophile was spray painted on the garage door of a home because it had a Biden sign in the yard. This guy went too far. You might not believe what I believe, but you went way too far. Still, Candace Hall tells me, she told me from the beginning, she told me today, she forgives this guy if indeed he is convicted. Let's talk about him now facing eight felonies, including hate crime charges and felony gun crimes. If convicted, we are talking about years and years in prison. We're not going to publicly identify him right now because he will not be officially charged until he faces a judge. That'll happen at 9 tomorrow morning. And, of course, Local 4, we will be there. Back to you guys. So, Sean, just how much did this suspect talk to police? It sounds like he's very cooperative. And I heard he was very emotional. He was at the kitchen table with his own father, with the investigators, and they spoke for five hours, I heard that he was in tears, that he clearly knows right from wrong. Uh, this was politically motivated 100% is the reason why he uh, is telling them he did it. The only time he expressed remorse, I am told, is when he found out that both the halls 
are veterans. Well, listen, the man down the street we're on right here, who was also targeted, is also a veteran. He was with the 82nd Airborne, and he probably doesn't even know that. My goodness. All right, Sean, keep us posted. Let's move now to today's coronavirus numbers. The state reporting 1,054 new cases of COVID-19 over the past 24 hours, and along with that, 11 more Michiganders who've lost their lives to the virus over the past day. All right, now take a look at the seven day rolling average from clickondetroit.com. Right now it sits at 867 new cases per day. That's the highest it's been since April 30th. When you're in the business of entertainment and you aren't allowed to entertain people, that is a very big problem. And Illich Holdings admitted as much today. The company announced furloughs and layoffs are coming to staff at Comerica Park. Little Caesars Arena and the Fox Theater. Local 4 Business Editor Rod Maloney is live outside Comerica Park tonight with a look at what's happened and where the companies go from here, Rod. Well, you know, it's one of those things where as a business in general, you can't operate without revenue. And if you don't have crowds, and that's what they're in the business of developing crowds, uh, they have to do something. They've held on for as long as they can, they say. And so today they pulled the trigger on layoffs. Another level. Tiger spring training started, played a few games and shut down by mid-March, left Lakeland's Joker Martian empty. The Tigers played only 28 games at Comerica this year to empty seats. Little Caesars Arena sits silent too. Illich Holdings saying it's lost 200 event dates so far this year. He had previously put a million dollars into a fund along with another million from Major League Baseball to pay part-time help. But now the money's run out and it's the end of the line, says Entertainment Group President Chris Granger, who put out this email today to employees, quote, our industry was the first to shut down and most likely will be one of the last to return. Indeed, even as capacity restrictions are relaxed, we remain severely limited in our ability to welcome back guests in any meaningful way. It is in this environment that we have had to make the difficult decision with respect to our business operations to put in place some temporary furloughs as well as layoffs, end quote. I'm uh, surprised it took this long. Business analyst Ken Dalto tells Local 4 COVID's economic impact is just really beginning to hit, and it will hit hard, especially in the hospitality and entertainment business. Many of them will not reopen, and I think there will be a permanent reduction in Illich and people of his size and uh, the kind of business he's in. There'll be a permanent reduction going into the future of their size. And he says that if they can get back up and running to full capacity, it's going to take a while, like perhaps a year or maybe even more. So he says that for the people who had been laid off, it's a sad day. Uh, and even though uh, Congress might come up with another uh, stimulus package, uh, they may have to go find another line of work, another part time job, because there may not be one for them down the line. Back yeah, it's well, speaking of that, Rod, did, did they talk about the prospects of these laid off workers possibly getting their jobs back? Well, yes, uh, the company is saying, look, we, we want to bring you back. We certainly want to be up and running at full capacity as soon as humanly possible. And they said to their people that they've had to lay off, that we want you back. We would like to bring you back. The question is when, and nobody knows right. when that will be. Everything's so uncertain. Okay, Rod, thank you. Well, one down, two to go. More than 65 million people watched the first presidential debate of 2020, and pretty much unlike any other in modern history, not particularly in a good way, according to most observers. Let's get to Susan McGinnis with reaction from the nation's capital. Susan. Well, Devin, the debate was largely a disappointment to those on both sides who saw 90 minutes of anger and acrimony lacking substance and civility. Democrat Joe Biden launching a whistle-stop train tour of Ohio and Pennsylvania after last night's first presidential debate. What I saw last night was all about him. He didn't speak to you or your concerns. The animus evident a day later. I think he was very weak. He looked weak. He was whining. Following a debate called a low point in American history. Everybody knows he's a liar. But you I just agree. want to make sure. Joe, you're the liar. I, 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 I want to make sure. You graduated last in your class, not first in your I, class. <laughs> I want to make Mr. sure. Mr. President, can you let him finish, sir? The president flouting debate rules he agreed to. President Trump did not come to participate in a debate. He came to disrupt a debate. Tens of millions watching ugliness overshadow the issues, including the economy, racism, and coronavirus. Are you willing tonight? 
to condemn white supremacists. The attention instead focusing on the president's refusal to condemn white supremacists and an extremist group known as the Proud Boys. Proud Proud Boys. Boys. Stand back and stand by. The group today celebrating the president's words. Another low point, the president's refusing to say he'd accept the election's outcome, offering more false claims about mail-in ballots. They're being sold. They're being dumped in rivers. This is a horrible thing for our country. He's trying to to scare people into thinking that it's not going to be legitimate. Show up and vote. You will determine the outcome of this election. And for those who will, was anyone swayed? I think I'm still pretty undecided. Hoping to avoid a repeat, the Commission on Presidential Debates announced today it's making changes to upcoming showdowns to ensure a more orderly discussion of the issues. The next debate happens one week from today in Utah when the vice presidential candidates will face one another. In Washington, Susan McGinnis, Local 4. All right, Susan, Local Force Trust Index is fact-checking last night's debate, and you can find that on the homepage of our website. Click on Detroit.com. Much more to come here on the News at 5. Here's defender Karen Drew. They're the people we trust to care for us when we're sick, but the feds say they conspire together for their own personal gain. Fake patients and the illegal drug market. An elaborate scheme to make millions off the opioid drug crisis. The Local Force defenders take you inside the investigation. Coming up. And a major construction closure this weekend on I-75 could affect how you get in and out of downtown Detroit. We'll have a closer look. Hey, Doc. How close is too close? We're learning more about how COVID-19 can spread during ordinary activities like talking. I'm Dr. Frank McGeorge. Coming up, the video that demonstrates just how our speech may impact the risk 